of questions. But um, the question was you know, with respect to spatial effects related to, to vaccination as they impact agent-based models. And I think this is actually an extremely important and uh, uh, underserved area in agent-based modeling that, that it's actually a really um, effective tool to, to probe. Um, um, and my thoughts on this are at a couple of levels. So firstly, um, um, we know that from the Canadian context, at least, um, there's, there's real variability um, in the regional or, or neighborhood, at least, level vaccination rates that can be seen, much more so than you'd, than you'd expect if you see naively, if you, if you saw were to see the overall vaccination rate. So you might have a, an overall vaccination rate of, you know, upwards of 80%, um, 85% um, uh, for COVID-19, for a province as a whole, um, for, you know, the, uh, for the primary series, but you, you might have in certain regions, you know, fewer than 50% um, vaccinated or, or certain neighborhoods, you know, fewer than, than 50%. And as a result, there's a real risk of outbreaks locally because um, vaccination statuses tend to cluster locally and they tend, and the, you know, the underlying conditions, the underlying typically infectious communicable conditions that against which you're vaccinating are, um, are themselves spatially mediated. So you might have an outbreak associated with uh, measles or pertussis or, or you know, uh, chickenpox or COVID-19 um, because you get this clustering of people and, and kids in that area might interact more, for example, in ways that, that really mean there's a lot of susceptible circulating in that, in that region. This is one of the reasons you get these kind of, in, in the modern era, you know, these um, outbreaks, uh, in measles, for example, in under-vaccinated communities, or in some cases pertussis, because of a combination of waning vaccination and 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 you know under-vaccination of, of of children. Um, so, you know, that's one reason. And another reason is spatial. You know, the spatial location, I think, often ends up um, um, tying to under vaccination for structural reasons. It's not just happenstance that people cluster. It's, you know, there may, uh, there may be uh, language barriers in people in a given region. There may be uh, barriers in terms of lack of uh, available vaccine clinics uh, within a given area that, um, that end up um, leading to people not not getting vaccinated who otherwise would be open to it. Um, there can of course be clustering in attitudes um, that's quite common. Um, maybe it's a vaccine hesitancy or even vaccine hostility in, in certain regions that lead to these pockets. But you know, sometimes it's due to these, these barriers of, of uh, trust, of understanding, of, of, of uh, availability of, of nearby uh, vaccination venues. Um, and it, it can lead, you know, because of lack of transportation to those venues, for example. So I think of, um, you know, the location as, as tied up as a driver for um, uh, vaccination rates, as well as sort of tied up with this, this concentration of vaccination. I also think some about it, you know, interventions that explicitly take into account those, those, um, uh, those vaccine uh, uh, under vaccinated areas and respond to them by, by explicitly targeting, um, uh, you know, specific geographic regions based on vaccine uptake. And, and there is information about this that might allow us to to pursue such strategies. And I think for HPV, for example, for your project, 
um, with Amanda, you know, their schools um, that have lower rates of uptake of HPV vaccine, for example, might be, um, be natural targets. And once again, I mean, if you have a school that has under-vaccinated kids, often those schools uh, for, for HPV may be interacting, in this case, sexually, and, and may be a uh, you know, perfect storm or neither, neither kid is, is vaccinated. Um, uh, and therefore, uh, you can get spread of HPV from boy to girl, for example, or vice versa, easily. Um, uh, and that can lead to you know, much bigger effects. Um, uh, so I, I think about spatially targeted interventions. And I think about spatial screening strategies uh, too. Um, in the case of HPV, for example, screening, um, you know, screening efforts um, designed to identify in case of HPV infection or identify early stage cervical cancer, really investigate areas with with low uh, vaccination coverage. I think there's a lot of a um, lot of potential there. Um, uh, it's it's interesting um, some of the the effects in this area. I will say they're they're not all leading in vicious cycles. I mean, to the degree you have under vaccination, it can lead to outbreaks, which then motivate vaccination. And for people in that area, because they're familiar, there was an outbreak, you know, in their neighborhood two years ago, or or there was. Um, uh, an outbreak of, of let's say, uh, whooping cough or or what have you, uh, pertussis that that might motivate vaccination. But um, anyway, I I hope these um, those are some thoughts on vaccination and spatial effects um, that uh, are on are on my mind. Yeah, um, yeah. Hopefully that that offers some value.